So in this video, I need to go to WWC, which means I can't be here. So I'll, I'll see you there in just a sec. I mean, I should pro probably just... <laughs> So, we left Halifax and we're on a plane to Toronto and we're about to land. So, it's been five hours ish. It was supposed to be two, but our flight got delayed by three hours, so we're still in Toronto, but we're gonna leave soon. So, I finally made it to WWC and I'm here with Josh and we're gonna talk about basically why they decided to switch to the Gen 6 Radeons on the 1500 gallon display, which is phenomenal, by the way. This is my first time here. I'm a little bit excited, I'm sure you can tell. So, you had Gen 4 Radeons on this tank up until this point. Correct. And what about the Gen 4s did you guys really like? Like what really worked on the tank and the reason you decided to go Gen 4 in the first place? So we had we had threes prior to the four and they worked really, really well. We made a transition to this new facility, which was a pretty large undertaking, but in the process we had to buy more lights. So it just made sense to carry the same light. So for that reason, we, we moved the fours into this facility. You know, in general, I think we kind of got a good feeling from the Ecotech product, so we just stuck with it. I would say today, it's it's our most successful lighting source. I mean, you know, we had T5s and halides and all that, but it was a lot of work, it was a lot of upkeep. They grew beautiful corals, so we started with Gen 1s at one point, we got rid of them. We went back to T5 and halide, and we went to Gen 3s which was a really good move because we said, you know what, we really got to try to get with the times. It's time for us to just make the move and believe in it, and we did. That's fair. So with the, the Gen 4s on the 1500 gallon mm -hmm. display, what wasn't working with them? Like where, where would you say there were, um, I guess, missing elements? I don't really want to say anything bad about the light because I really, I think we as a, as a collective, we liked what it did for us. Right. It penetrated the bottom of the tank really, really well. It's four feet deep, so that was a big obstacle. I think with as many devices as we have on the tank, we couldn't really squeeze in anymore. You know, when we go back and look, you'll see they're they're kind of butt to butt. Um, so 22 lights was our cap. Maybe we can find a couple pictures of where the power heads are that are kind of dark. Maybe the very back corner where the hot pink Millie is, it was kind of dark. And then this bottom corner over here was kind of dark, but we didn't get a lot of algae on the glass because it's focused on the coral. So for, for, for a whole bunch of different reasons, we were happy with the lights all, all together. Right, well, that makes perfect sense. And I use Gen 4s. Um, mm -hmm. I've actually used every generation of Radeon since yeah. they've come out. It's been a, a very cool evolution of watching them uh, change over the years. But I did find that, especially with hobbyist size aquariums, the, this tank is massive. The Gen 4s, they had a little bit more punch, so I would have to personally like raise my lights off the, the tank to get the spread I was looking because for. Because they're so focal. Exactly. So when the Gen 5s came out, I was really happy to see that change. But it's really interesting that on such a large tank that you guys switched over to that panel style lighting. Mm -hmm. So what, for the Gen 6s, what were you looking to gain? Was it mostly the spread? Well, kind of, kind of contrary to your question, I think my biggest concern was penetrating to the bottom of the tank. Right on. Because, you know, you even mentioned energy a little bit here. Yeah. When you take that energy that's more focused and then you spread it out and give it a wider array, I felt like my head was telling me that we're going to be worried about getting to the bottom of the tank and that's clearly not the case. Yeah. No, you guys have a lot of light in this tank. So the punch is not missing. It's just the redistribution of that. Uh, extra light more to the sides versus having those tighter cones go to the bottom. Correct. But there's still a ton of light in this tank. Yeah. So once you switch the lights over, um, you, you've noticed a large change in the distribution of light in the tank. Like what, what parts of the tank can you tell now are being illuminated more we're, G6. Oh, we're definitely gonna go straight <laughs> to the walls. I mean, the walls all the way around are, are way more lit. I would say 50% more light is covering the areas that we didn't have the light beforehand. So when we when we did decide to make the change, I was also a little worried about what it was going to take to make it happen. You know, it's a, it's a new power supply, I didn't do my research, does it mount the same as the other ones? So 
the boxes showed up and the team threw them up, no questions asked. It was quick and easy, even though I thought it was gonna be more of a headache. The power supply is the same. So you left all of the original cables and uh, cable management and everything up there. It was just the fixtures themselves you had to swap. I mean, oh my God. literally that's it was so a much blessing. easier. Yeah, that's so much easier. So I think I think Sean was probably the happiest out of the group. Because there's 20, 22 fixtures up there. 22 lights. That's a lot. That would be a lot of lights to reroute everything for. And two, there's there's a bar that hangs in the very front of the tank that's kind of, it's on a chain actually, but it's it's dropped down further yeah. with an angle so that it matches the rock structure. Um, not exactly easy to get to because it's, it's four feet away from you. Right. Yeah. yeah, we were up there a little bit earlier and it's, first off, it's tight back there. And hot. It's not, yeah, it's super hot. There's not a lot of room to move and that bar is right at the front of the tank so you'd yeah. be reaching straight over everything. The, the lighting fixture themselves, is it's exactly the same. So it mounted right up in the same spot. The power supply was the same, like you said. Uh, the cable management, we didn't have to do. And I didn't know that going into it. So transition you were, you were was seamless. for the worst. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and then communication, I mean, they had no problem. Lights went up, communicated easier. I don't know if there's a difference in firmware between the four. And, and of course the five and then the six, right. but it, it definitely communicated to Mobius a lot easier. That's awesome. So there's obviously a pretty large difference in the optics between the Gen 4 and the Gen 6s. We're going from a pair of pucks to like more of a panel style mm. mixture and the spread, having seen it myself on my own tank when I did an upgrade, even from the G5 to the G6, which is less of a leap than the G4 to the G6. Um, was that change in the way the light's being delivered that spread uh, one of the factors to switching everything over on the 1500? I don't want to say it was a problem, but we had we had a couple areas that were really dark. You know, in the back by where that gold torch is, yeah. was extremely dark. Underneath here where there's, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's a, a green Ghani and then there's a Monty. That's yeah, tucked, tucked underneath. way back there. So one of the, one of the difficult parts about having an acro tank is as they fill in you, you get those areas just i mean organically yeah for sure it's not a bad thing but then over time you start to manipulate where the corals are sometimes you forcefully cut an area out of a, a colony to get light back to that space if you really value that space right um so we were starting to do that this tank is now since november of 19 it's been up and everything went in as little tiny frags and we take three, 400 frags a week out of this tank. So we're constantly manipulating its shape. So it is what it is right. now. But the corals on the bottom and in the back are great. I mean, we're actually getting light to them now or we didn't have to, now we don't have to worry about it whereas we did before. Right. Maybe we can let our colonies kind of branch a little bit further out and get that space back. Because the light's actually getting around these larger colonies now. And there are a lot of larger colonies in the tank. Yeah. And what, what really caught my eye when I looked at it is I was expecting to see more shadowing within the branches of some of these larger corals. Mm -hmm. Even with uh, the Gen 6s, I was like, expecting a little bit more. And the only shadows to be found are on the underside. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems to be shadowing itself inside of the coral. Well, and even from coral to coral, like there's a Monty cap here that is below Acros and it is not shaded the way it would be uh, with you know, L like LEDs the way I traditionally used to seeing mm -hmm. them. It's muted, but not shaded, which is really interesting. So there's an observation that I made after they made the change from one light to the other, the underside of the coral, with the four, you're seeing, so shadow is dark. It's, it's yeah. lack of color, right? So it's dark brown or it's black visually yeah. at first glance. Now you can actually see the color of the coral in the skin on the underside of the colony, which is a really cool observation because that's old school. I mean, we didn't see that since T5. Yeah, We're, the, the corals are getting really wrapped. Mm -hmm. And the G6s have been on this tank for three weeks three now. Three weeks, yeah. So that's definitely enough time to start seeing some changes in the corals. So it, you're obviously noticing so, changes versus the, the G4s. Yeah, so two things. One, this tank is kind of a unique scenario because one, it's in wall. Right. Two, you can see it from two viewing panels. So right. we have this 11 foot panel on the front and then we have the five foot panel on the end. You get the whole perspective. The only thing you're missing is the top down, right? Right. Um, 
So it's it's almost accentuated. When they made the change from one light to the next, I came in the very following day. So I didn't get to see it that day. I came in right. the following day. And when I looked at it, I was like, holy, like initially it's different. Yeah. Like it's just different and I had to take it in. So those were the, the observations. Well, I can see the underside of the coral. Holy crap, the glass is lit up, you know? I'm seeing the power heads, whereas they were kind of off into this little shadow box corner beforehand. Right. You know, so vis visually, there was a lot of change. Now, after three weeks worth of time, we're seeing that color that I could see on the bottom of the coral is actually starting to richen. This right. belly is picking up color, or I'm sorry, displaying a different property. Right. Um, your note, the fact that you can see through those acros to the Monty. Yeah. That Monty was dark on that, the lip that goes up past the mycelium chalice there. Yeah. That was really dark. Yeah. It's on the vertical for one, and then two, it's beneath the other coral. So visible difference, absolutely. And that's incredible. Like to, to not have been at the tank when the swap was made mm -hmm. and to walk into the tank the next day and be able to notice that dramatic of a difference. I'm not surprised having uh, changed the lights on my tank from G5 to G6, again, not nearly as much of a change as G4 to G6, because mm -hmm. um, they're optically similar. I was shocked at how much extra light was being thrown at the sides, like being yep. able to see the overflow and the back wall completely lit up uh, versus having some shadowing. And then to, I'm seeing the same thing in this tank. And I never saw this tank before uh, when it had G4s on it, mm. but I'm seeing the same things like the power heads and it's just, it, it's really mind blowing how they managed to get the light to come off to the sides as much as it does. Yeah. I think, I think operationally it changes a couple things for us, you know, now we do have to clean the glass in certain areas where it right. wasn't very obvious. Um, not a big deal. It's par for the course. You have a reef tank, you got to clean your glass. Yeah. Right. Um, this is a laminated front panel, so it's two half inch laminated, laminated panels. Right. With, I'm assuming some sort of plastic film in the middle. Um, it does illuminate that. So it gives us a little bit more of a haze. Right. But I think we're gonna try to find a workaround for that. Maybe a different angle on the lights up top, maybe some sort of drop cloth to catch the edge of the, the, the glass so there's right. less refraction. But overall, I mean, I think we're just incredibly happy with the change. So another really big change with the G6s is they change the spectrum, mm -hmm. for, especially for the blues. So uh, going from the G4 Pros, which is uh, a whiter fixture and less blues to the G6 blues, how, how do you like that change? Like, what, what's your take on it? Do you prefer the blues? Do you prefer the pros? So, you know, it's funny, um, Patrick, from Ecotech, he told us originally when they came out with the, the idea of the blue fixture, that that was probably what we would want. How we work things and we run such a predominantly blue spectrum for so much of the day and the fact that <clears throat> coral fluorescence for us is extremely important. Naturally. I mean, hence our business, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think maybe in a way I kick myself in the butt or maybe we kick ourselves in the butt for making the decision to go with the pro originally because it was very white and right. it had that yellowish kind of almost dingy color to it. Right. The fish looked amazing. The the pinks looked amazing. Some of those, even the blues, right? The, the blue color in the coral. The chromatic colors versus mm -hmm. the fluorescent colors. Yeah. So so for that reason, I think it, it may have been better had we gone with the blues, but for, for this conversation, we're happy that we went with the blue because it really does it just that really crunchy pop. Right, it's such a crisp color from up top, and you know, we—I haven't even gotten a chance to give you that tour yet. But I want, I want to turn the lights all blue. Yeah. And let you give us an evaluation on oh, how that looks. I, I'm excited for that. I just even with the lights not fully blue right now, there is so much color in the tank and so much fluorescence. It's really impressive. I can only imagine it must look like fireworks when the blues are on full pop. The, the actual blue color is perfect. I mean, I, th I don't think we could ask for anything better. On the note of those uh, whites, so something I personally really liked, I'm, I'm wondering what you think, uh, with the switch from even Gen 5 to Gen 6, the same thing happened with Gen 4 to Gen 6. They moved away from having as many cool whites and swapped them out with warm whites. Mm. Did you notice the change? 
I did actually. One of the things that we, we would do is we would drop the reds down to be a smaller percentage. So we create a custom spectrum. Not so we don't we don't really follow a set template. And it varies from tank to tank, because if we're more predominantly Acropora, or if we're more predominantly LPS, you'll see less of that red in certain scenarios, or even the green we use differently. But primarily the, the red, we use a lot less. Right. With this new style, if you want to use the warm white, you're you're stuck with using it, right? Yeah. But we don't see that the the banding, the shimmery the color red across the yeah. bottom. You know, it's there. You know, so for the benefit of the coral, we're seeing the actual color in the coral accented because the color is there. But we're not having to mess around with that additional color in the red. Right. Yeah. Which is a really important note, like having color separation in the tank visually a little bit distracting, but also it just, I guess it doesn't read the same way. So having that just integrated into that white diode mm. is bringing out, like you're saying, a, a more natural coloration in the coral versus uh, having it kind of shooting around the tank a little bit. Well, you had mentioned earlier that the, the color's already there in the warm white anyway. Yeah. You know, so why not use it to our benefit? Yeah, instead of having it all separated. Color, yeah. Yeah. And I personally, I've always found that uh, warm whites do a really good job at showing off fish coloration. Sure. Which, um, when you're having, a, especially with like the, the Gen 6 blues, when you have so much blue going in, having a warm white to balance that blue out, to mm. pull some of that chromatic pigment, uh, uh, highlight that chromatic pigment, is just a really nice touch versus the cool white where you're just adding slightly more blue along with the white. Mm -hmm. You get less of a gray yellow tank. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you have a yellow yellow tank. Yeah. And then, or a white one. Casper's awesome. It's the first time I've ever seen uh, a white tank. Really? Never. I know you guys have had it. I've never seen one in person. That thing He's is cool. Phenomenal. He's been a really good fish. I mean, not overly aggressive at all. You know, we always have that worry that he's going to be okay, but aside from that, he's just another one of the dudes. And you know, I would expect in a blue tank that, like a, a predominantly blue lit tank, mm -hmm. that a white fish would look bluer, but he's like paper white. Yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of what makes him what he is, right? He's so white. Bumping bumping up from the Gen 4 to the Gen 6s, uh, did you use basically the same settings? I know you went from, like the spectrum is going to be different because you went from the pro to the blue, but is there anything else you had to dial in when you were changing the fixtures over? So um, prior to the change, we had two elevations of plateau if you look at the graph. So we have a really high point in the early part of the day where it's just like as full spectrum as we can get. And they were all turned up to 100%. Each plot was 100% intensity. Okay. Um, and then it dropped down into like a softer full spectrum. That way it wasn't a long photo period of really harsh, intense light. So I kind of stair stepped down. And then it was blue for the rest of the day. So we had this six or seven hour photo period of, of white light, including the ramp times. And then the remainder of it is blue. Little did I know, remember I told you I came in the next day and it was it was a different tank. So I thought it was bright, like completely bright. So I asked Sean, I was like, what did we do? You know, what does the template look like? So he showed me and, and we dropped it by 40%. So right now it's wow. currently a 60% overall intensity. You know, in my head, that means whether I'm right or wrong, it means that they're running more efficiently because we're getting the same output or close to without doing any kind of testing. And the fixture is not running at its max capacity. So we're not using every bit that it has to offer. I think that they'll last longer. Yeah, with diodes are running cooler, mm -hmm. which if the fans aren't kicking on, it's because the diodes aren't getting hot enough to have to, uh, to have a fan that. assist. Mm -hmm. the, the diode should last even longer. In my head, it makes sense that these won't get ever to that point or even close. Even if we run them at, let's say we get to 75 or 80 percent, the still the fan's still going to run 20 percent less. Yeah. Right. Visibly, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to note that because to me it looks the same. Right. So it's crazy how so your you eyes actually, play tricks on you. Yeah, you actually reduce the amount of light that is being provided by the fixtures mm -hmm. by 40 percent. The fans are actually not even running for the better part of wow. the day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So 
you're finding with these fixtures versus the Gen 4 is that you actually have to turn them down. You're getting more light you were getting with the Gen 4s. I think, I think maybe it's an efficiency factor. There's more light bouncing around inside of the aquarium. I don't know. I, again, not a scientist. I don't, I don't know what that means, but we do a lot on intuition here. So we don't run a lot of tests on par and how much light penetration we get. It's all visual. Right. The coral tells us the answer and we just look for it. You know, and, and currently right now, I don't think that there's any difference. Maybe it's a little bit less intense now that I'm really, really paying attention and trying to find the difference, but we haven't seen any lack of coloration in the coral, lack of polyp extension, none of that. It's, I was it's just gonna just ask. Just exactly the same. So the big switch has happened and you've noticed no drawbacks in the coral. They haven't reacted uh, adversely to it at all. The, the I switch. wouldn't say at all. I mean, so there's a little bit less um, growth tip so we know they're growing a little bit slower. So our, our path of, of progress is gonna to be to turn it up a little bit. Right. But I don't know that we'll able to get to 100% like we were. Maybe we will, I don't know. Have there have any of the corals responded uh, in a way that you weren't expecting? Either positively or, or potentially negatively? Um, yeah, actually the, the, there's a bounce mushroom that's up in the top corner we call Swamp Thing. Um, that's an awesome name. <laughs> it's, it's always had like a, a pink bubble on the skirt. Um, and for whatever reason, when we had the Gen 4s on here and they were turned all the way up, we were losing some of that pink and we were losing some of the bubble. Uh, and I think it was a stress response because there's just so much pounding light on it. So I think in the top area of the tank, because that's only, I don't know, 12 or 14 inches down from the, the surface, I think it's more subtle on the coral in this situation, but we're still getting the power on the bottom. So it's it's kind of a, it's, we're still in the in the discovery mode. You know that what? Way. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so essentially, because the light's being spread out uh, more evenly in all directions, mm -hmm. uh, you're finding that the corals that are closer to the lights aren't getting hit as hard. Exactly. While the corals at the bottom of the tank are still receiving Correct. the light that they require. That is super interesting. Yep. And better, because I can see the dirt pile sitting in the back there. <laughs> oh, so for maintenance now, like you can actually, so you're saying before you couldn't even see under the rocks as much. You're no. getting more illumination across the bottom of the tank below the rock structure. Yeah, we we wow. actually got algae that was growing on top of the coral line initially. Right. So it's funny, yeah, now we have to clean areas better because that corner over there was always really dark. Right. Now that mushroom, I don't know if you see a little green fleck down yeah, there. Yeah, I It looks see like it. a piece of recorder that maybe fell and started to die down there. Right on. And now it's coming back. It's coming around. back. So, so you've actually opened up more real estate which for is more core to us. Yeah, it must be because you. This is a working display. Yeah. So you guys are in and out of this tank, taking frags out, like you were mentioning earlier. So having that light uh, reach more areas of the tank means more opportunity for more coral mm -hmm. so that this tank can continue to do what it does, but now even better, more efficiently. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about efficiency, so we talk about that all the time. Square footage is everything to us. Just like just like a farmer having crop space, you right. know, and every everything that we do requires us to think, is it more value to us to do it this way or that way with the space that we have? And in this case, I mean, you can see real estate is kind of at a premium in there. No kidding. It's pretty, pretty slammed. So now that you guys have switched over to G6s on the 1500 gallon display, um, and you like what you see, are you guys going to start uh, bringing more G6s into other uh, grow out tanks or working displays? Without question, I mean, for sure. I, I mean, we were, we were behind the times. We were two generations back, so right. it, it was due, you know? And while we're still not having problems with the lights that we have currently running, it's still probably better. If we can, if we can have more usable space, it's a win for us. That's awesome. So when we're talking about efficiency and usage, I feel like we're going to get a better quality product out of our, our coral if we don't have to pound them with everything that the, the light has. You're not pushing it to the red line. You're not, mm -hmm. you know, maxing things out. You're in a really comfortable spot where uh, these fixtures are going to have the, the longest longevity possible. Time will tell. I mean, I'd be curious to even have this conversation with you down the road. Yeah, no, I'd love to revisit this. So did you guys lose any Gen 4s? Did you have to replace any of them? 
on this tank? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so when you go behind there, there's, I, I think this tank runs 80 or 81 degrees. Right. There's, it's warm back there. Yeah, there's really not a whole lot we can do because not only is this 1,500 gallons, but it's got a sump that's right here adjacent right. to it. And then next to it, there's a 1,500 gallon water container and then another 1,500 water, gallon water container. And this space from this corner here to there is only 20 feet. Right. So there's not, I mean, it's it's crammed back there and it's a lot of water. So you're not gonna change that volume no. anytime quick. We add salt to the vat and uh, the water rises so fast and it impacts that space. So the, the lights, they don't get a chance to really properly cool. There's so many tight together. Right. In, in most applications, you're not gonna put 22 lights. Yeah, so this essentially is really not an ideal scenario for an LED fixture to be in. So you're, 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 uh, you're asking a lot from them, but somehow the G6s are just like, yeah, we're, we're good. So we're far. still cool. Let's see what happens, but it's, a, it's definitely a tough environment for them. So ultimately, did the G6 upgrade meet your expectations? I think visually and like immediately initially, yes. I think when I first approached the tank, to kind of evaluate what the difference was between the two, I think it was a home run. But because this is not only a visual hobby, but it's it's not necessarily just a hobby for us either. Right, we got we got to do this for a living. So we'll see. It's been up there for three weeks. We've not seen anything negative. If anything negative was going to happen, I, I I feel like it should have happened in the first two weeks. Right. That's not always the case, but I think that we're on a we're on the right track. I think if we go up with the lights a little bit more, we'll be right in that sweet spot where we like to be. But let's find out what it does in the next year or two. I mean, honestly, are the lights gonna last like I hope they, they would? Are the corals gonna grow like I hope they do? Right. You know? Those are the questions that we still have to answer. And it's gonna take time to do that, which makes yeah. perfect sense. But so yeah, I mean it met our expectation. As a company, I think if if we're gonna switch the other 300 fixtures here, then yeah, it must have done something for us. That's awesome. I'm really excited to see, and I, I, I really want to come back to look at this tank again in uh, in a year or so and see how you uh, how you guys felt the fixtures actually performed mm -hmm. over time. Especially with, I'm curious to find out how having all of that extra fill light from these fixtures and that coverage and those new spaces in the tank how that actually works on the business side for efficiency of growing out the corals too. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious to see how it affects that. So, you know, there is one thing that, that I kind of hope for, and this is, this is a, it's a personal quest almost. Back at our old facility, when, when we ran only Kalkwasser for um, supplement, we switched to calcium reactor and we, we got a little bit less coralline algae. Right. Okay. Coraline grew so, so fast when we were just strictly Kalkwasser. So I know the science behind that. I understand. But since we switched to LED, we actually have less Coraline on top of that, even in systems where we run exclusively Kalkwasser. Wow. So I'm curious if we get more of that panel lighting concept back, if we'll also get that really thick, Coraline. matted, just shelving Coraline. The, the stuff that looks like it's plating. Yeah, and, this yes. tank doesn't have it. You see it goes, I mean, it's patchy. It breaks off, it's there. The rocks are purple, Yeah. but it's not the same as it used to be. So right. I really hope that if, if, if we find that balance again between the Kalkwasser and the, the new style of lighting that is more similar to the old school mentality, yeah. maybe we'll get that Coraline back. I don't know. I would love to see that. And I think the G6s could be a good path to trying to find that ridiculous encrusting mm -hmm. coralline shelves. I Have remember you... breaking it off and just having like seven layers of mm -hmm. coralline and people wanting to, hey, can I have some of that? Because they want to have a plating coralline mm -hmm. in their tank. Have you ever changed lights on a tank to a different fixture and bleached the coralline before? I haven't. I feel like that's what's happening. That is entirely possible. Just the, the sheer intensity of it mm -hmm. being, and having a tighter cone causing uh, 
that coral lines to be basically overloaded. Mm -hmm. And then having it diffused again and really spread. I'm still blown away by the fact that the entire tank is lit. Like, there's no dark corner. You can <laughs> the even black see background. The, the underside of the lock line has color. Color. Oh. At the very surface of the water. That's insane. Nope. It's, it's hard to gauge, like, my tank is so much smaller than this, and my rock structure is pulled off of the sides, and uh, my corals aren't nearly this large, so it's, sometimes it's really hard to gauge how much light is actually getting in there. So I did notice right away when I switched from the G5 to the G6, but it is insane in this tank. Like, you can't not notice it. There's so much light. When you get a minute, over here on the other side, we have a... Uh, uh... Uh, 36 by 36 by 42 cube. That is a single Gen 6 Pro. So a side-by-side -side reference in daylight shots might be worth your time. Josh, thank you so much uh, for having me out here to chat about the Gen 6s. I've had a blast. I've never been to WWC before. This facility is incredible uh, and I'm so stoked. I love the tank and Dude, you're a stand-up guy. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. I really enjoy the analytical talk. They, you know, I didn't think that you guys were gonna be able to make it out. You know, the weather's been funny, the, yeah. the travel's been weird, but I'm really glad you made it. Oh, dude, it's it's been totally worth it. So I'm, I gotta come back at some point, but I, I, I wanna see more of the facility in the back. So let's- Oh, let's do a tour. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. All right, cool. let's go.